Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I very much appreciate the our Chairman's kind words earlier about uh, my role. Uh, being the glue is one thing, being the face is a little scary, so, you know, uh, it's better than that. But uh, uh, I want to thank Jim Clymer for the 12 years he spent as National Chairman and the several years now I've spent in Pennsylvania, I've got a, a close-up look at what a chairman has to go through. And let me tell you, it's not easy. And he's done a terrific job. And on a personal note, I owe Jim a lot, I think. But on a personal note, I owe him uh, a lot more than, uh, than anything to do with politics because it's through his efforts indirectly or directly that I actually recognize those scripture readings that Cynthia Davis recited early on. And I thank you for that, for all you've done in that way. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Peck gave a wonderful introduction and he told, he, he uh, re reminded us why we're here. And um, I want to build on that a little bit. But he talked about, it's more than just electing although that is our mission and I want to go come back to that. But there have been many years that I've been in the party where that was not even a possibility. I got involved in 1971 and there were many years where we were simply a, a, a beacon of, for, you know, we were, a, 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 and that was our role. We do not when the day of our redemption would come of the, for our nation, but we stood there and it wasn't just me, but, but there, you know, the, the whole, it, it, there were times where it was fairly hopeless, and I, I had a conversation with Frank Flukiger last night at dinner, and it reminded me, uh, going back to the 70s, and I didn't realize that Frank had been involved, but uh, this is a story that may give you, if you wonder how we're doing, and, and think, well, are we making progress? Well, let me give you a, a, a story that, uh, uh, something to compare it with. In 1972, the American Party, American Independent Party in California, but they had a unified uh, national convention in Louisville, Kentucky, had 2,000 people and, uh, come and we, and we nominated a candidate and he was on the ballot in 32 states and, and he ended up getting a million votes. Within four years, four years, the party had split into half and Frank's half had their convention in Salt Lake City in June of 1976, and our side uh, had our convention in Chicago, and instead of being one unified party going forward, by 1976, our, our faction was on the ballot in 17 states, his was on the ballot in 16, and we got about the same, about a total of 170,000 votes each and 350,000 altogether. By 1980, um, my faction, the American Independent Party, was on the ballot in eight states. What was left of the American Party was on the ballot, I think, in one state in, in Utah. And um, that's not progress. So if you ever, and we had some very fine leaders in that party, but there were circumstances. So if you ever wonder, well, are we, well, how are we doing? Compared to how it went in the past, we're doing just fine. We could do a lot better, and I want to touch on that. But, but take heart. Never, you know, don't live in desperation. Don't live in, geez, it's, you know, it, we're never going anywhere. Well, we are. We've got to the point where we've elected four candidates for office in, in, in Nevada. We've got four elected candidates for local office, partisan office in Pennsylvania. One of the finest uh, congressmen to ever walk the halls of Congress in the last 50 years has joined our party. We have the, 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 the number one uh, congressional legislature, legislator in the, in the state of Missouri has joined, joined our party. Uh, we nearly won a legislative seat in Alabama in, in May. We came that close. It was a two-way race for the Republican, and we thought we were going to win. It ended up getting 47%. Our candidate in Colorado was uh, threatening uh, 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 at, at some points to win last time. And so uh, I would say we're in pretty good shape. We are at the crossroads, but um, 
Now is not the time to become faint-hearted or go weak in the knees. Now, Bible, like I said, has ta ta talked about why we're here, and he's right. It's, it, it, there are other things besides winning elections, but as a political party, when you get past all that, Randy, what is our mission? Elect candidates. That's right. And we have to build the party structure and the foundation in order to do that. And everything we do should be judged in terms of whether or not our actions bring us closer to this goal. So when we consider the status of our party at this point and where we're at, I want to point out the importance of leadership. Where parties have dedicated, active, attentive leadership that makes the growth, outreach, and the development of this party a priority in their own lives and for their organization, we always grow, invariably, wherever we are in the country. It doesn't really matter what part of the country it's in. I hear things, well, this is a liberal part of the country. This is this is, if you have leadership and you have determination and dedicated uh, effort, now there are other circumstances, uh, ballot access, uh, things are not all equal in that. Our party organization will grow, our message will get out. On the other hand, where state leaders are preoccupied with other things, other interests, or they're discouraged by a perceived lack of progress, or they're fearful of dealing with the public, and we've had many cases where uh, state chairmen uh, don't want to seem to answer phone calls or respond to people. It's, getting, it's, it's not so bad anymore, but it's been in the past as we ask people to do things and they maybe weren't ready. That's, that's a problem. Or if they're or if they're distracted by the, the, the lure of seemingly attractive candidates from other parties, when that happens, our, our, our effort in those states flounder. It founders. And I, I, I really think it's important for all of you who are here, state leaders, national committee people, to send a signal, a clear signal, that we can only reach our goal If our leaders, if the rank and file, if everyone is involved, keeps ourselves focused on the mission and not be distracted by the allure of short-term attractions outside the party. Now, in the time, in the time that I've been involved in politics, Uh, well, since the first election I was involved in formally in 1972, there's always been a Republican coming along who was going to reform the party. In 1972, John Ashbrook came along and he was going to reform the party and, and reform Nixon. And then I think it was yeah. Phil Crane got involved at some point, and then Ronald Reagan. And you said, well, Ronald Reagan. You know, R Ronald Reagan, who's a great speechmaker. Ronald Reagan, the president who abolished the uh, Department of Education, remember? There's always somebody, Pat Buchanan in 92. There's always a reason. There's always a reason to keep people in. The Republican establishment loves that. They don't mind that these people uh, are, are so-called dissidents. They want them to stay in because that keeps them from joining us and building a foundation that can compete with them. So let's keep our focus where it needs to be. Instead of us looking back over to them, you know, to them longingly every time, oh, you know, this is a great hope this time. Let's build our own foundation, create our own leaders, and bring more people in like Virgil Good and Cynthia Davis and Pat Miller and, and people like that who will come to us. This sounds kind of harsh, but uh, I was a Republican for two two weeks in 1971 and I'm still trying to live it down but <laughs> but let's let, you know in my view the only good Republican is an ex-Republican and may their numbers multiply yes. <laughs> all right I would ask uh, I've got a, a couple more things I want to say uh, do we do we have one or two states where we have affiliation motions? 
Did the credentials, is my, Monta no? Okay. Then I'll, at the end of this, Bob, I'll recognize you for Alaska. Uh, let me just say a, a couple more things. Uh, Jim just talked about ballot access. This is one, th one area where if we're gonna be active, we're gonna be a, uh, get involved. If, if your state is not on the ballot, that should be your first priority. Either you raise money, if you don't want to go out and get petition signatures, raise a whole bunch of money so you can pay for petitions. Or, or more likely, organize petition, uh, petitioners in your area. And uh, pay particular attention to the ballot access uh, 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 workshop that's going to be coming up with Janine Hansen and Nick Sumbles. And I saw Nick come in. And you be nice to Nick because he's had a hard 24 to 36 hours. He's been all over the West Coast and... Uh, I'm glad to see him here. And uh, one other thing, Bob Peck welcomed us. I want to recognize another great person from Washington, uh, Karen Murray, who's uh, done a great job with communications and who will be helping. I'm sure, I'm sure with that at the national level in many capacities in the future. And Karen edited, a, a, produced a book uh, and uh, the book is called uh, America Needs a Third Party Now, and, and it's all about the Constitution Party, and many of the people in this room wrote articles for it, and about a, 10 months ago, we talked about this as an idea, and she made it happen, and I hope every one of you will go out, get a copy of that book, and, 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 or get more than one copy, and, and give it to others for Christmas, or, 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 or order, and, and take them back to your states, and get them distributed. But Karen, thank you very much for produ uh, producing that, uh, that book. It's right out in the hallway, and uh, don't leave here without it. Uh, I don't know if we have enough to actually make that, do we? Okay. All right, at this point, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recognize uh, Bob Peck for the purpose of a motion. No, that's fine. Keep it going, it's fine. Um, huh? You want to wait for the credentials? I've always done it. That's fine. I'll defer. I'll defer well, from it. Yes. Mr. Bartlett probably is real upset that I'm trying to upstage him. So. Yes, I am. All right. <laughs> well, we do have a credentials committee report later on, okay. and I, Maybe a good time. Yeah, I thought that would be the appropriate time to, to deal with uh, uh, new admissions. So, well, I think did I you? <laughs> <laughs> 